I'm Mike O'Dowd and this is Zach Ferguson with Defense Strategies Group and today we're going to go over drawing from close quarters. We're going to talk about technique, we're going to go over three ways of creating space, and then we're going to talk about real world considerations. <laughs> For today's intents and purposes, we're going to be talking about drawing from inside the waistband, but the techniques are applicable whether you're going outside the waistband or inside. It's about drawing when you're in close proximity with another person. It's very easy on a standard static range to just draw and get your gun out, and most of our holsters are designed for speed. But when we're drawing from inside the waistband, we sacrifice speed for concealability. And so when our guns are concealed, whether it's in the front, whether it's in the back, or it's in a bag, it often takes a little bit more time to get the gun out. That means we need time, and we don't always have time as a luxury in an emergency. So we're going to show you some techniques to get the gun out quickly, get it out effectively, and also creating space to give you a little bit more time. Hey, I'm pausing the video right now to let you know about a free giveaway that USCCA has going on right now. Check out the link below for all the details. And let's get back to the video. So for today, we're going to be practicing our draws in close proximity using each other uh, as training partners. When we do that, we specifically use airsoft guns. And Zach's going to kind of explain why we use airsoft as opposed to our real weapons. So it's great. It's a great tool to use airsoft guns because this one's a Glock 19. I personally carry one. So all the parts are identical to a real gun, but we're taking all the safety factors away from using a real firearm. If you're going to use a real firearm, make sure you let your family members know and your roommates that you're going to be using one in a particular room in a house and that you clear and safe your gun. So magazine comes out, you get a clear and safe, and then also have your roommate buddy check it with the light. That way everybody's on the same page that the gun is clear and safe. Zach and I both spent our careers in Naval Special Warfare and uh, we were both combatives instructors, which is fighting. Something we see a lot in the people we train now and the people we used to train is the drawing in close proximity. People are so quick to go for their weapons when they're right up on their opponents. And the fact is, is the moment Zach goes to draw his gun, I'm going to read that situation and I'm going to try to stop that. And now it becomes a fight for the gun. So the most important part of this is A, the technique, and then B, creating space to allow you the time for the technique. So let's go over how Zach actually just pulls the weapon out and how he moves, and then we'll go into how he creates space for that move. So when Zach's really close to his opponent, the, the last thing he wants to do is draw his weapon into his opponent. First thing he wants to do is clear the debris, clear the clothing from the weapon so he can access it. So he clears the weapon, he's carrying appendix, and he goes for the gun. Typical draw is gonna send somebody out at full extension. But at this close, in this close of proximity, that puts me in a, in a place where I'm gonna grab it or I'm gonna grab it from here. So when he goes for the gun itself, and as he clears the holster, the first thing he does is pull that gun back and he creates um, essentially a shield and sucks the gun back to basically a distance where I have to go in to grab this. Okay, so that's, that's the, the basic template for how you're going to want to draw from concealed. So when Zach goes for his weapon, he clears the debris from the weapon, brings his arm, his elbow drops, and the weapon kind of naturally comes at the side. Now, there's not necessarily a functionality purpose for bringing his arm out to the side and tilting the weapon. The gun's still going to function. It's more for the ergonomics, how his hand kind of naturally sits back here and his elbow can suck back. He's using somewhere between the palm and his wrist as the guide on his hip of where he wants to suck the gun back to. He knows if he pulls it back to his fingertips that it's getting a little bit close to his belly and if he brings it up a little bit too close, he's just handing me the gun. So he doesn't want to do that. He's somewhere right around that palm, that wrist, sitting on his hip. The shield, now this is the basic shield, this is just a shield, but the shield is designed to create distance and space, so if I were coming in to grab, he can create more distance and space. We talked about two techniques for the draw, which is clearing the shirt, your standard draw, creating a shield, and the last one we're going to talk about is actually creating the distance, separating yourself once you've drawn the weapon. Zach's going to draw and he's going to pull out and he's going to circle draws his weapon and he starts moving back and circling to the outside. So when Zach circles, the reason he's circling is because 
it's going to be much easier for the opponent to run straight than it is for Zach to run backwards. So kind of like a, call it like a bullfight. He's going to be circling, which forces me to run and chase him at an angle, which is much harder to do than just a straight line. As he circles, ideally he's circling away from his weapon hand, which makes it harder for me to reach as he turns and allows him to use his hand and his arm to create even more space. With all our drills we do, we like to dry fire at first, gain our mastery, and then we go live. Zach is gonna demo live right now and show you what it looks like. So as Mike and I were talking about earlier, a demoing with the airsoft gun, we're gonna do that live fire now for you. This is gonna be the first option. So we just went over the technique of the draw, just mod O, how to basically pull a gun out. Uh, now we're gonna talk about creating space. Creating space is the most important piece when you're in close quarters because to get this gun out effectively and actually have it not used against you, you need that space. A lot of instructors we see are teaching on the live fire, it's, a, it's more of a hybrid of just pulling the hand out of the way so the student doesn't shoot their hand but they're not actually creating space. So we're gonna show you three ways to create actual space that also keeps the student's hand uh, out of the way of, of the round. So the first way we're gonna uh, show is similar to how most uh, instructors are teaching. Uh, this is a way we teach as well. But instead of just pulling the hand up and creating a shield, we're gonna pull the hand. The hand is gonna pull up the shirt, which exposes the weapon for the draw. So Zach's gonna pull the weapon out and is forming a shield, but as Zach does that, he's also leaning into me. So this move actually requires him to push into me to create me moving back and getting space. As his hand goes down, he pulls out the gun and he puts it against the belly or further back if he needs to, if my hand can reach out, and that elbow drives deep in and pushes me back. Then he uses that to step back and circle out, take his shots. So the second technique we're gonna show is if the opponent or the threat is coming in on you, how to stop them and then draw with one hand. So as I step in on Zach, he frames up essentially on my shoulder and my neck, lifting the chin, which creates separation. As he does that, it blocks me. His arm's minimum 90 degrees, uh, more could be better. And he lifts up his shirt, tucks it over the handle of the gun, exposing his firearm. He reaches in, grabs it, pulls, same as before where the the palm and the wrist comes to that belly. He can modulate it if he needs to, where if I reach for it, he can pull it back. And he uses that separation to then push off the circle as he gets to his gun and creates full space. So this is it in real time. I push in on Zach, he frames up against me, creates space, pulls out his weapon, gets to his gun, both hands, and then he's gone. So the third technique we're gonna show is just a raw, gritty, plain and simple push. This technique is when somebody's encroaching already on your space, the last thing you want to do is go for your gun. The moment he goes for his gun, we go for the gun. And now we're in a fight for the weapon. We don't want to be in a fight for it. We want clear distance to get our weapon out and uh, do what we need to do. So Zach decides he's just going to shove me back, throws me, launches, pulls, draws, extends, and then he circles still. His motion doesn't change. His draw is always the same. The only thing that changes is what happens to the opponent, whether it's sticking an elbow in their face, whether it's framing up against them, or whether that's actually just shoving them out of the way. So this is what it looks like in real time. I come in on Zach, he throws me back, goes for his gun, full extension, while he circles in case I decided to charge at him. Last thing we're gonna talk about is real world considerations for drawing uh, from concealed. First thing is actually the space that you're creating. Remember, this is a real human being coming at me. So I can't just half-ass put my hand up or put my hand up. I actually have to block Zach from coming at me. So when I put my hand on his shoulder and block his chin, I lift up. And even then, that may not stop him. Look how long his arms are. If he reaches in, he grabs it. So I may have to use this as step one, pull my gun even further back than I'm used to training. Now, is this safe on a live fire range? It could be. 
but you can always train this dry fire. You can always train this with your airsoft gun. You're gonna have to decide for yourself if this is safe enough for your ability. I highly recommend doing this dry fire only for a long time until you get complete mastery because there are a lot of dangers uh, involved with pulling your gun out here. But this is a non-standard shooting position and it is very, very realistic. Another consideration is you may have to actually extend to full arm. You may actually have to extend to a full push to create the distance you need. But the moment you pull that weapon out, you have to understand that the fight has changed. The fight is now lethal. It's no longer fist to fist. It's now life and death. And you have to protect this gun at all costs. Distance is the way to do that. Another real world consideration you're gonna have to think about is your target and what's beyond it. So I pull back and I start laying rounds in the Zach. Where are those rounds going? As I circle, where are those rounds going? Because all of a sudden the target shifts and now I'm shooting straight into the camera, straight into you people. I can't do that. I have to know what's beyond. So I circle and maybe I can't shoot if I circle this way. So I may have to circle this way. These are things you have to, have to consider, but you're not going to consider it reactionary. You can't think about it while you're in the moment. This is something you have to think about uh, with situational awareness before this happens. When somebody approaches you, you have to understand your surroundings, what's around you, and then game plan how you're going to respond to that. So the last consideration when using your CCW is ammunition. There's all different types. Ball ammunition, hollow point ammunition, frangible ammunition. I personally use frangible ammunition. Say I miss my threat and I hit a wall like drywall where a regular ball ammo will penetrate through and possibly hit somebody else. Frangible ammunition will actually splinter into small pieces, but to a human it's still lethal. When you're carrying concealed, no matter how you carry, just remember you have to train. You have a responsibility as a citizen. If you're going to carry a weapon on your body, you need to train it. Uh, you need to train how to shoot it. You need to train how to fight. Fighting from close quarters is not just about your gun, it's also about your body and your fighting techniques. So make sure, follow along, Watch some of these videos. There's more on USCCA. Check them out. If you have any questions, you have any comments, go ahead and put them in the comments section below and we'll try to get back to you. We've got a lot more content coming. Give us any suggestions you might have. Hey, before you go, make sure you check out the free giveaway that USCCA has going on right now. The link is below in the description where you can get all the details on how you can enter.